Hello and welcome to MasterChefTrading.com market recap for the week ending Friday, January 30th, 2015. This Friday, a sell signal was generated by our trading system on the S&P 500. But I think it's not just a sell signal and it may be more than that. So we went ahead and opened a short uh, position in the S&P 500 based on the market breadth deterioration. Also, the prices of bonds hit new all-time highs and they still remain in a strong uptrend. We'll also examine gold as priced in the, in the United States dollars as it hits resistance. And uh, we'll look at five of the uh, major uh, mega cap companies within the S&P 500. ExxonMobil, Microsoft, JP Morgan Chase, General Electric, and Chevron as they all look uh, bearish to varying degrees. Okay, so this is a chart of the S&P 500. And I've shown this in the past. So long term, the S&P 500 stock market is still in an uptrend. Um, for our trading system, we entered the market right here on January 22nd, but as you probably are aware, the choppiness was just extreme, and uh, we ended up um, closing our position with a small loss, about 1% or so. And then on Friday, actually it's not marked on this chart, but um, we went ahead, it says sell January 30th, 2015, but we went ahead and opened a uh, short position in the S&P 500 by purchasing an inverse ETF called SDS. And I think that um, the reason for that is, let me show you on the next charts, it, it makes more clear on the, next, on the market breadth charts. So, move it over just a little bit. Okay, so there's also S&P 500 and, you know, um, several um, items on this chart you can see. Number one, this is a uh, blue right here is a 20-day exponential moving average and this red here is a 50-day exponential moving average. And today you can see the 20-day exponential moving average moved below the 50-day. You can see it more clearly here. So this is a... Uh, at the very least, a short-term um, uh, bearish or potentially go to cash signal. It was the same thing right there. You can see after it crossed over, there was a nice decline. But more importantly, I think that um, market breadth is also deteriorating. So this is a percentage of stocks within the S&P 500 that are above the 50-day moving average. And today it dropped significantly to only 39, uh, 39%. Just yesterday it was over 50. You can see it was over 50 right there. So it's a significant decline in just one day. Also, um, the percentage of stocks on a bullish percent buy signal is still below its 20-day moving average, but it is above 50%, so it's still uh, firmly within the bull market um, range. Um, also, this, the advanced decline line decline is uh, below its 20-day moving average and, and, lo and uh, going lower. Uh, important thing is that this level right here from... Um, let me see, from January and also from December, they are very important uh, support levels and should be close below, especially this December level, we could easily retest this um, levels from October. So um, that's the reason why we went ahead and opened a short position because there is a uh, nice potential to the downside possibly to at least 200 day moving average but maybe even lower it, it just depends on how low it will go and uh, next chart 
this is also the same thing as S&P 500, and this is one of the market breadth indicators that I monitor, ITBM, Intermediate Term Breadth Momentum Oscillators. These indicators are, are based on uh, McClellan uh, breadth oscillators. These are very useful, I think. And uh, you can see, you can kind of see it better here. Um, so the this indicator came up and closed above its 10-day exponential moving average right there. It was on uh, 26th of January, 26th of January, yes. But then rolled over. And this is a, a very negative sign when the indicator comes up and then rolls over. Like, for example, here you can see it came up and then continued higher. So here we had a very nice uh, advance based on good breadth as well. And the same, this is a volume momentum oscillator. Same thing here. So it advanced, it advanced. And then you can see the, another example right there. You can see. But here you can see it already rolled over. So in other words, um, more stocks are, are going lower within the index. And I, I'm thinking that we may break the break the support from December and um, possibly find support here somewhere. We'll see. But in any case, that's the reason why we went ahead and opened the short position in the S&P 500. Looking at bonds, TLT, treasuries, uh, United States Treasury funds, I showed in the chart in the past, strong uptrend, you can see. I don't think it's, um, you can argue it was a strong uptrend. Our buy signal was in January um, 2015, but you know there was other buy signals as well, and they all resulted in uh, profit because of the strength of this uptrend. So this latest one is up about nine, almost yeah, almost ten percent or so. Um, and you know there's lots of uh, scared money rotating into bonds. Um, and this obviously is, um, if money is rotating into bonds, they must be rotating out of something. And um, they probably are rotating out of stock markets, out of stocks and into bonds. So for now, I see no, um, no end in this uptrend. And, um, you know, even if it does uh, retrace some of, the, some of its move, um, possibly to like 130 area, uh, the uptrend will still remain in the bond market. Let's look at gold. This is GLD. Um, and it definitely is improving. Uh, the picture has improved for gold. Um, so our signal was on uh, January 6th. And uh, first of all, gold is in a downtrend, a long term um, for a few years now and shorting rallies was always uh, profitable during the uh, downtrend but uh, the latest few um, for example this short right here did not really work out that well and a market kind of turned around swing the other way and uh, we did enter the market right here on January 6 so we still have a position open um, let me see where is it 123 so about, uh, sorry, you know, about 6% or so uh, gain from this position open. It has run into resistance, and you can see plenty of resistance here, but it, it's even better. I'll show you the next chart where you can see plenty of resistance overhead. So gold uh, daily, this is a gold spot price. Lots of resistance right here in this area, in this area. And you can see it kind of already ran into this resistance. But uh, I'm going to, um, you know, give it the benefit of a doubt, so to speak. So important thing is um, this is a blue line right here. Let me just disable this rollover. It's easier to see. This blue line right there, it's a 20-day uh, exponential moving average. So it did close above the 200-day exponential moving average. So that's a positive sign right there. But for example, right there, it also did the same thing. And then right there, it also did the same thing, but then it rolled right over and then rolled right over. So 
that's just like a first step, so to speak. The important step is this red line, this is a 50-day exponential moving average. It has been below the 200-day um, moving average for quite a while, for a few years now. And that's the important test. If this exponential moving average, the 50-day exponential moving average, closes above the 200-day exponential moving average, we could consider this uh, security gold to be in an uptrend now. But it hasn't happened yet. And, you know, you can see gold is already overbought um, on this indicator, price moment oscillator. So, you know, it's kind of like in the, at the moment of truth. And, you know, the strength in the United States dollar, let me show you the next chart. So this is UUP power shares, uh, United States dollar fund as measured against all other currencies has been extremely strong since the, um, since it became bullish somewhere sometime in August of last year, dollar gained 15 or even more, you know, 16% or so. So this is a, um, so to speak, a headwind for um, gold because it's priced in dollars. And let me show you um, another chart of gold priced in euros. And you can see that, so compare this chart, you can see there's a decline in 200-day moving average. And just uh, you can see that the prices are kind of moving from the low, uh, from upper left to the lower right. But let me show you the same uh, gold but priced in euros oh. sorry so let me just move it over look at this chart it's completely different first of all there was a big base basin pattern from uh, April of last year until um, January when it finally broke out it's completely different chart you can see declining this is flat and then advance and the reason is because euros are depreciating against the dollar all right so moving to um, GDX market vector vectors gold miners ETF uh, same story as gold, lots of resistance in this area, plenty of resistance, this 200-day simple moving average, see how it closed above it and then failed, closed above it and then failed again. So two times in a row, um, GDX has failed to close above the 200-day moving average, and we could easily roll over here. We're still in a bear market. And, um, you know, this is still a counter trend uh, bear market rally in my book. Having said that, um, I will give it the benefit of a doubt. And you can see that, that GDX, um, the market breadth is improving. So this is advanced decline percent, advanced decline volume percent is improving. Uh, bullish percentage, uh, bullish percent index is at 50 but see already rolled over so i wonder if this is a um, like a temporary blip and then it'll come back up or if we will see more stocks rolling over and um, becoming uh, bearish as well uh, or rather going off the uh, point and figure um, uh, buy list a uh, buy signal and same thing with a new highs, new lows indicator has not turned positive just yet, still negative. So lots of overhead resistance in gold. And now let's look at some of the big stocks within the S&P 500 that um, have come under significant selling pressure. So ExxonMobil, um, you know, is all of the oil uh, related issues um, came under selling pressure on uh, December 8th and rolled over into the bear market right there. ExxonMobil is a really big um, part of the S&P 500, so 
it influences it a lot. Microsoft reported earnings and gapped down and also became bearish. See, Arun Red is above one is at 100 right there. JP Morgan Chase, same thing. Arun at 100. Um, there is a bearish rollover. Same thing. Just became bearish in January 28th, just now. General Electric, not a big company. Same thing. Arun at 100. Bearish uh, momentum. Bearish crossover. Sometime in January, uh, 14th became bearish as well. And uh, out of the big, large uh, mega cap stocks, CVX, uh, Chevron Corp, of course, uh, even more significant selling pressure became bearish in October. So definitely some selling pressure there. So um, this just means that uh, there is, you know, these five stocks, the Exxon Mobil, Microsoft, JP Morgan, General Electric, and uh, Chevron, they comprise a significant percentage of the S&P 500, and they weigh on the actual index as well. So if these, you know, large uh, stocks are um, outright bearish, then uh, we may expect some uh, pressure in the index itself. And that's another reason why um, we went ahead and opened a short in the S&P 500. All right, um, let me show you how to find us. So mastercharstrading.com, find us there. Uh, we have blog right there. And uh, we have, um, uh, we post these videos there and this uh, comments there as well. So please do visit us there. Also, I have a new section called videos where you can watch um, uh, various uh, videos that I record here. And if you wanted to uh, follow along, and for example, these charts are located, if you click on public charts on mastercharttrading.com, you can go to public charts right there and uh, follow along as well. Sign up for a mailing list uh, because shortly, hopefully soon, we will start a, a trading service and, um, you know, you will get a special offer if you are on the mailing list already. Uh, you will get uh, a discounted um, offer for the trading service. And if you have Twitter, Facebook, YouTube or StockTwits account, accounts, you can find our links there as well. All right, thanks for watching and uh, have another great trading week. Goodbye.